The volcanic mines of Ginger Island are home to new enemies, new items, and most importantly, a new forge that allows you to upgrade weapons, enchant tools, combine rings, and change weapon appearances. What we'll cover today is how to access the volcanic mines, enemies you can expect to see, what goodies you can get out of it, and how to get all the way through them. If you guys find this video helpful, please consider subscribing, or I stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez. The list of items you'll need to make your way through the volcanic mine is a lot shorter than the Skull Cavern. All you'll need is a watering can, a good sword like a galaxy sword or a lava katana, and food that heals somewhere around 40 or 50 apiece. To get there, we'll first have to get to Ginger Island, which many of you by this point are aware you need to take Willy 5 Iridium Bars, 5 Battery Packs, and 200 Hardwood to repair his ship. After you get to the island, go to the right, watch the Leo cutscene, and return back to the main beach area. After you return back to the main beach area, you'll see a little flying fire guy which you'll follow all the way to the mines. In the first area, you'll see there's a river of lava that you cannot cross, but hinted by the pipe dripping water onto the lava, you can use your watering can to turn the lava into obsidian and cross safely. You can also bridge your way over to the left, which once you go through the door, you can find a golden walnut, which is used to unlock other pieces of content on the island. Returning back to the main area, we'll come across our first enemy of the mines, the tiger slime. They behave in the same way as slimes from the regular mines, but they do a bit more damage and have a bit more health. Once we enter the first level, we'll come across the flying fire guy who is no longer a friend. This guy behaves in a similar way to the way that bats do in the regular caves, except again, he does more damage and has more health. There's an enemy that is very similar to the flying fire guy, who I will refer to as the dashing fire guy. He works in the same way as the flying fire guy, except sometimes he will dash at you like slimes do once they charge up. This attack will do a decent bit of damage on you, and it will also slow you down for a couple of seconds. For this reason, I found the strategy to kill these guys is to not allow them to get into the black space where you can't hit them, and attack them as they're charging up their dash. You also come across a guy swimming around in the lava who will shoot fireballs at you, each of them doing more than 20 damage. This monster cannot be damaged while he's swimming under the lava, and he is also not damaged by the watering can. Additionally, there's another enemy I believe is called the Hothead, and when its health reaches zero, its fuse will light on top of its head and it will blow up after a few seconds. This enemy is not difficult to deal with, just make sure that you're not close to it when it blows up. The final enemy I came across was the Flying Sentry. He's very slow and doesn't do a lot of damage, but I feel like there's more to him because of this page I came across in the journal. Just like in previous mines, you'll come across Copper, Iron, and Iridium Ore, but you'll also come across a new Cinder Shard. Occasionally, you'll also come across a Forageable Dragon Tooth, which is used in the Warp Totem to get to the island. Enemies drop a variety of different resources, but the most notable ones being Ginger, Cinder Shards, and Golden Walnuts. As opposed to the 120 levels of the normal mine and the endless nature of the Skull Cavern, the Volcanic Mine only has 10 different levels to it. This is laid out in the form of 4 regular levels, then 1 Dwarf Pit Stop, 4 more regular levels, and then the Forge. Unlike the regular caves in the Skull Cavern, you don't reveal ladders by breaking rocks and killing enemies to move on. Instead, you traverse across the level and find the door to gain access to the next floor. A lot of the time this just comes down to navigating your way around the rocks and the lava, but sometimes the door could be locked behind a gate. The gate is activated by 1-3 to three pressure pads, the number of which is indicated on the door by the red lights. Sometimes the pads could be very close to the gate, but other times you might have to wander around the level before you can find it. At one point when I was playing last night, I even had to use my watering can to get to this pressure pad. But once you've stepped on all the pressure pads, the door simply opens and you can move on to the next spot. Upon entering level 5 you'll come across a dwarf with a shop, a place to fill up your water, and a place to rest from enemies for a while. For 100 Cinder Shards, the Dwarf will sell you Cinder Clown Shoes, which offer a plus 6 defense and plus 5 immunity bonus. He'll sell you Cherry Bombs for 300 gold, Big Bombs for 600 gold, or Mega Bombs for 1000 gold. For 1200 gold, you can also buy a Roots Platter Dish, which offers a plus 3 attack bonus. For 10,000 gold, you'll be able to unlock the recipe for the Warp Totem to the Island, which is crafted using 5 Hardwood, 1 Dragon Tooth, and 1 Ginger. You can also unlock the recipe for Ginger Ale for 1000 gold, which you use 3 Ginger and 1 Sugar to create. And once you've reached level 10, you've unlocked the Forge, which can be used to upgrade a variety of weapons and tools. I'm going to be releasing a full guide on this very soon, so if you're more interested in specific details regarding the Forge, make sure to check that out. Once you're done at the Forge, you can exit via the bottom left, which will bring you back to the starting area. From now on, you'll be able to access the Forge right from the beginning area without having to go through the previous 9 levels, although on future days you will not be able to work your way backwards through the mine because the gates will once again close. That's all I have for now though, like I said, if this was helpful please consider subscribing, or I stream live at twitch.tv slash unsurpassablez. I'll see you guys in the next video, peace.